Hey everyone, this is Scott Sambucci at The Controls. Today we're gonna to talk about shortening the enterprise sales process with pilot programs. So we're just gonna hop right in. So pilot programs are a way to think about from, from our standpoint at Sales Quality, we have the Q framework. And the Q framework is designed to use questions uh, to help you qualify and quantify your sales process. And so some of those basic questions that we, we think about are what, who, why, and how your customers are going to buy your product. And so pilot programs squarely fall into the how, the plan. When the customer, you're, you're giving the customer a view of the future, you've got your sales process going on today, and you're helping the customer understand what's it going to be like in the future once they fully adopt your, your product or your service, the pilot program helps to bridge that gap. It gives them a taste of what your product will do for them and the benefits that they're gonna receive without them fully committing because particularly as a startup, uh, for example, or as a new product, it might be hard to get that top executive to sign off on a full blast adoption of your product. So the, the idea of using a pilot program will help to short circuit some of that sales process that could take months or even years. Way to help the customer begin using your product and to offer some metrics and measurables to show the outcomes that you think that that you can achieve, so let's uh, let's hop right in. So, why are pilots so important? What's the most important? What what are some of the reasons you want to do a pilot program? So, one is that pilots build trust. So, again, as a startup, as a new company, or as a new product, it's easy for us to see and believe and say that our product is going to do all of these great things for our future customers. The customer, on the other hand, they're conditioned to hear what you're saying and then interpret it as if it's potentially some hyperbole or that you might not have any real data to back up your claims of what your product does. And so a pilot is a way for you to um, provide some of that value and to give the customer a, a view, a window into some of the claims that you're making and show that you're able to, to actually deliver on these promises. Secondly, the pilots help you build street cred. And so what we mean by street cred is that by running the pilots, you're not uh, just going to be working with executives and decision makers. You would actually be working with the users of your product who are often a very different group of people. And, and we'll see this when we go through some of the strategies for executing on pilot programs. The idea of being on site, working with users, getting product feedback, and enhance the features of your product, being able to fix bugs, really getting in line, in tune with the actual users of your product can be done through the pilot program, because, and this is how it helps you build that street cred. Pilots also show that you're willing to be tested. So again, it's easy to say to a customer, hey, we'll help you increase revenue, we'll help you shorten this process cycle. And so by saying, well, look, customer, I know you might not believe what I'm saying, so I am willing to provide you some value, you do some services in a, in a very constricted way just to prove to you that before you sign the bigger contract or before we roll it out, out with, over a much larger agreement that uh, I'm willing to be put to the test. So pilots help you show that you're willing to be tested. And finally, pilots ensure long-term success. And so me by the long-term success is that you know, the pilot program will expose you to the environment of the customer. So when you're going on site, when you're installing software or you're getting your product, you're going to be exposed to all of the other factors that are going to weigh against you, work against you, um, maybe work for you in terms of what the what a full rollout might look like. So say you, you're getting up and running with the software with your software product and you have to integrate with other core systems within your customer. Well, you might not know what all of those systems are even before you get up and running with a pilot, or you might not know how to access them, or some might be easier or more difficult to integrate with. And so by starting with a pilot, you're gonna get exposure to all of these different steps along the way that are going to be necessary for you to roll out more broadly. And so through the pilot program, you get exposure to these problems and it helps you figure out what the roadmap will be for, for a bigger, more full scale implementation, thus ensuring your success of that implementation as opposed to trying to push to the finish line of a large sale, getting in there and realizing that, wow, we've got a lot of headwinds here. We've got a lot of landmines 
that could really inhibit our ability to deliver on what we've promised in this big contract. So instead, by using the pilots, you're going to get much more focused on that environment and figure out how that long-term roadmap for implementation should look. So those are all the reasons that you want to think about pilots. And so what I did is come, I came up with 10 areas or ideas or, uh, or reasons that you want to do pilot programs. So let's just keep running here and go through these 10. So the first, the first idea is that with pilot programs, you want to start small. You want to start really, really small, like painfully small. And so here's, here's what I mean by that. So you know, say you're selling a software product that's got 20 features and functionalities built in. And obviously, you're excited about these features, and you think that all of them add value to your user, which is why you built them into your product. Well, with a pilot program, maybe what you want to do instead is focus in on two or three or maybe even one feature or functionality of your product that you know works really well and that you know will provide huge value to the customer. And so by honing in on a super small part of your overall product, it's a way for you to guarantee success in the early stages of a pilot, and then it allows you to expand out. So you're not, not trying to teach 20 features to the users in your pilot program. Instead, you only have to teach them how to use one feature, and then it's always easier to grow from there. So that's one way to start small, is just in terms of the feature sets or the, or the, the actual use of your software or the use of your product. The other way to think about this really in a really, really small way is the number of users themselves. So you might be thinking ahead and saying, well, look, I've got you know, potentially 1,000 users of my software at this big company. And so as part of a pilot program, maybe you want to start with just 10 or 5 or even one user as the first place to begin implementing your software as part of this pilot program. So let's, I mean, let's take an extreme example. Let's say you've got a point of sale system that um, and somebody like Walmart, Walmart came to you and said, hey, we heard you have the world's best point of sale system. And you know what? We want to buy it right now. And we want to implement it immediately with all you know, 10,000 stores we have across the world. And I don't know if they have 10,000 stores. I'm just imagining they have that many. Like, what would you do? You'd say, oh my God, possibly install, do 10,000 installations. Well, you would start scaling it back. You'd say, okay, well, first let's start with just one store and install our point of sale system with one store to make sure it goes really well. And then do a second and a third, figure out whether there's some commonalities in that blueprint to implementing this software, and then we can start rolling it out more broadly. You would just naturally do that if, if somebody like Walmart said, hey, we want to implement this across 10,000 stores. In fact, you probably with that very first store, you would want to scale back even more and say, well, let's just start with one checkout line, with one checker to make sure that that one checkout line works really, really well. And we can make sure that that one checker knows how to use our software in this point of new, this new point of sale system without any single hiccups. So that's the, that's the idea of doing a pilot. So if, if, you were, if you were selling the system to Walmart instead of them buying it from you and you were presenting it to them, running a pilot with Walmart would say, hey, let's pick a store and just run this point of sale system in just one checkout line over one shift with one clerk, with one checker, and make sure that it works. And then when it works, then we'll start expanding it to some other, other checkers along the line um, or other adding additional checkout lines. So that's what I mean by start small. You want to start really, really small. Make sure that you're successful with that. And it's always easier to go large faster um, than it is to start too big and then have to scale it back. So that's tip number one, starting small. paid pilots only pay and you're only gonna have 10 users over a two-month time and so it's a hundred you a hundred dollars times ten it's a thousand dollars a month so for two months a pilot program is two thousand dollars small dollars your bigger opportunity across the company could be hundreds or even thousands of users that two thousand but what that does is it establishes with the business executive what they're saying is look we think 
that there's a better path forward for us to run our business. And we think your software is going to help us. And we know that you're going to be bringing this value. And so we're going to provide the capital that we need to invest your best effort to get that value, to experiment and to test, to make sure that both sides are getting something out of this transaction. And so you're basically creating a partnership with that business executive by forcing them to pay. So that's, that's the first reason. The second reason you want to be paid pilots is that when you're selling to enterprises, most companies, as the larger they get, the more different departments are going to be involved with the purchasing. Oh, if you're selling software teams or IT teams, info security, most companies have compliance teams now because most, most industries have some kind of regulatory environment that they have to comply with. Then you, every company has procurement and vendor management and legal. These are all people and teams of people that are going to get involved. You're going to have to go through a contract process, which means you will become an approved vendor. You will have made it through the procurement process and you will at least be exposed to all the risk and info security and IT restrictions that are going to be necessary before going into a larger scale rollout. Now, a lot of, a lot of those groups in info security, they'll make exceptions. So even as a startup, if you don't have all of the uh, security audits that you might need in order to go live, that's okay. Because a lot of times with pilots, if the risk team knows that this is just a pilot that the business team wants to run, then there there'll be likely to provide an exception to you so you can get in the door, give the business team an opportunity to experiment with the software, see if it is in fact useful, and then they can always come back to a larger conversation down the road to make sure that you do, in fact, have a path forward to getting all of these security open items closed. So the idea of doing paid pilots, like I said, is twofold. One, it gets the business team truly invested. And secondly, it exposes you to all of the back office people that are going to be required to get a, give approval before you can roll out more broadly. So if it's not paid, all you're doing is a free trial. And if it's only a free trial, then there's really no value uh, perceived in the product or service that you're offering. So second tip is paid pilots only. The third is establish outcomes so that you win the game. So what do we mean by this? So when you're running these pilot programs, you want to set up metrics and measurements so that coming out of that pilot program that you guarantee that you win. So for example, if you're selling, uh, again, I'll use software as an example, if you're selling software that's guaranteed or you're, you're, you're promising there's going to be certain cost savings then or certain time savings, then as part of that pilot, pilot program, you want to build that in and say, hey, in this pilot program, our goal is to show you a 15% improvement on cost. And so knowing that you can, in fact, achieve 15% or even more, and you want to get buy-in from that business manager to say, yes, this is exactly the measurement and the metric that we want to achieve as a result of this pilot program. So by doing that, then you're setting clear outcomes and you're establishing those outcomes in a way that you can win. And if you don't do this, then what's the risk? You could have a great, in your mind, a great pilot, like, hey, all the users are using it, all the users like using it, and we seem to be having a great experience, and at the end of the pilot, the business manager might go, yeah, it went pretty well, but I think we're going to pass for now. You have no recourse because you don't have the rules established, the outcomes established ahead of time to the game to say, hey, if we show you 15% improvement on cost, then we will roll out more broadly, yes or no. So that's the idea of establishing these outcomes so that you win, so that you can always make sure that it's easy to roll from the pilot program into a full-scale implementation. The fourth tip is to keep pilots short. I mean, you want to keep them short. Um, and when I say short, I mean somewhere like roughly think one to three months, right? Depending on your product, depending on your service, how complex it is, you want to keep them short. If it's that complex of a product, then think about ways that you can, you can pare down the feature or the implementation such that you can keep it short. And the reason you want to keep it short is because, you know, the business executives you're working with are busy people, right? And so if you have a pilot program that runs more than three months, let's say you have a six month or nine month or longer pilot program, what ends up happening is that that business executive is, I mean, on a day-to-day -day basis, they're getting bombarded with external factors, external variables coming at them. They have competitors, they have business issues, they have 
day-to-day uh, -day operational issues. They have strategic changes. They have team changes. They have all these things happening around them every single day. And so if your pilot runs too long, what's going to what ends up happening is that you kind of get lost in the shovel. So getting lost in the shuffle is the worst thing because now you don't have a definitive recourse to say, well, like, hey, we ran this pilot over six months and maybe by in the first month or two, the executive was really, really engaged, but then they got busy with other new strategic outcomes that they had to deliver on for the business. And now you're coming back to them six months later, they may have even forgotten that you were there. Or they might say, oh yeah, I'm really glad we did that pilot, but you know things have changed here now and we wanna think about something else and let's come back to this maybe next year. So you wanna keep it short so that you can retain the focus of the business executive to make sure that when you reach those outcomes, you can again very quickly roll into a larger implementation, into the next step of that relationship. So keeping pilot short will ensure that you can achieve as measurable outcomes in a short period of time and then give yourself the opportunity to very quickly start the expansion. So number five, provide daily and weekly updates to the executive team. So what, we, what you wanna think about is like as a concierge service, when you are rolling out these pilots, you have to be in charge of the daily outcomes. You have to remember that the executive, while they might be invested with the dollars and some of the time. And while the, the users will be using your software, at the end of the day, it's your responsibility to make sure that the project, that the pilot is moving forward. And so the daily and weekly updates are designed to show progress and to make requests about what you need to further support that pilot. So a daily update might be as simple as one to three accomplishments that you did that day. And it could be really small, like, hey, we added two new users today and we trained one new user. That could be what you did that day. And then the daily, and that daily, the next bullet point might be tomorrow's goal, five new users and train the two new we got on board today. executive starts to feel and three next items that you need for next week. So if at the end of the first week of the pilot, you got 10 users up and running, you started processing transactions through your software and um, you were able to integrate with some internal system. Maybe those are your first three outcomes for the first week. And then the next week you need a meeting with some risk or IT person in order to integrate with a second, a second system. Well, you want to put that in your weekly update as an ask to make sure that that executive is staying active and paving the way and getting you through the roadblocks that could be ahead in order for you to accomplish what you need to accomplish to reach those measurable outcomes. So the daily and weekly updates, just think like a consultant. If you were on site running a project, what would, that, what would you want to give to your client as a consultant to make sure they are seeing your progress each and every day? So providing these updates, ensure that everybody sees that progress. You're basically documenting that progress from day one to you know, the last day of the pilot. And then week to week, you'll be able to go back at the end of the pilot and say, this is the progression of how we did. And look, we were even ahead of schedule and we provided even more value than what we promised. So that's my fifth tip, providing daily and weekly updates. Sixth is to be honest. This goes also with what I was just describing with the daily and weekly updates. You want to be on site because you want to, you want to ensure success. And the only thing is to make sure every single user, whether it's two users or 10 users or 20 users that are part of your pilot, you want to make sure that you are watching each and every person log in if you're using soft, if it's a software product. You want to make sure they're logging in, that they're able to access your site, that they're able to use it. You're going to see a distribution curve of users. If there's 10 users or 20 users in this pilot, you're going to get a couple that are gonna pick it up really quickly and be good. You're gonna get a large part in the middle that you know mostly get it or mostly okay. And then you're gonna get a couple that really struggle. And by being on site, it's like you are the on-site tech support for your product. 
and you're going to be able to see and make sure that those people that are struggling are able to, to learn how to use your product and make sure that they are successful. The other advantage about being on site is, is just from a product development standpoint, watching your product being used in the wild, you may identify all kinds of features and functionalities that you, know, you thought you built it the right way. And then once you had users actually using it, you realize like, wow, we have to make a fix on this. Or what if there's certain browsers, web browsers that are used at your target company that you didn't uh, prepare for? You know, there's in the financial sector, for example, there are tons of banks and financial companies still using old versions of Internet Explorer, like IE9, for example. If you built and tested your software in Firefox and Chrome and said, oh, this is great, and then all of a sudden you realize in the pilot it needs to be compatible with IE9, well, that's a quick fix that you're going to have to do. And only being on site uh, are you able to get visibility as to these problems. Because if you're not there, what's going to happen? Think about it. If you're not on site and somebody can't access your site or they're having issues using it, usually they're either not going to say anything or they'll just complain to the manager and say, oh, this software you're making us use, it doesn't work. I tried it. It's slow. I don't know what to do. It's really hard to use. They're going to come up with 100 excuses. And that's all going to filter up to the manager. And the manager is going to filter it up to your executive. And the executive is going to go, huh, geez. Well, I'm glad we just did a pilot because now we're not, we're not invested in the long run. It's just a pilot and it doesn't sound like it's working. Instead, if you're on site, you get to do the training, make sure people are using it correctly, and you get to troubleshoot immediately if there's any problems and, and launch and push those hot fixes when you need to. So being on site is critical. And if you're an early stage company, there's nothing more critical than your early customers and their success. So when you're launching these pilot programs, you want to make sure that you are on site and that you've got people, if you can't personally be there, that you've got somebody on your team that can be there on site at least every day for the first week, probably for the first couple of weeks. And even if everything is up and running smoothly, you want to make sure you're going back on site regularly throughout the pilot program to gather intelligence and to make sure that you are seeing all of the possible use cases of your, of your product. So being on site is hugely important. The other last advantage to being on site I mean, as part of your implementation plan, think about explaining this to your business executive as you are proposing this pilot program. You're not just saying like, hey, yeah, we're going to turn on 20 users live and yeah, we'll just, we'll just email them their, their logins and then they'll be good. Like if I'm an executive, I'm like, okay, well, what if they have problems? How am I going to make sure they're going to be successful? I'm going to pay for this, this pilot program. I'm putting myself out there. How do I know that this pilot program is going to go well? If instead you say, look, Here's what we're going to do to get your be on site. And on the first day, I'm going to sit with three users and only three users, make sure they get up and running right. And then the next day, we'll do five more. And by the end, we'll log in. If they're able to use the software, I'm going to give them any training they need to get in order to make sure they're using it and identify any problems and any hiccups. That's part of this pilot program. So while you're investing a small amount of money, you're also going to get this wonderful concierge service to guarantee that there are no problems whatsoever with you getting up and running with the software. So now you've proposed a really sound implementation plan that the business executive can get behind because they know it's not just hoping that people will use it, that you're going to be there on site every day to make sure that this is successful. Because the last thing they want to do is team feel like, oh, this is just another thing we have to do, right? And if it doesn't work, then they're going to heat the heat. They're going to get they're going to get the pressure from their team and say, why did you make instead you're going to get guarantee that this thing is successful. And being okay, so we are we're flying here. Now we're on number seven. I'll take a quick drink. Number seven, assume the expansion. What I'm so in this pilot program, we're talking about process, you know, four, eight weeks, somewhere around there, maybe keeping with a couple of features or a couple of functionality pieces of your product. So while you definitely want to keep it small and keep it focused, you also want to give yourself a really clear path quickly. If your pilot program is 10 users, and you're able to get those 10 users up and running in a week, and they're all really doing 
really, really well. We're all starting to see through your service. Then just assume, like, hey, you know, Mr. Customer, looks like these first 10 are actually going really well already. It's only the first week. Looks like all 10 are logging in, all 10 are using it, all 10 are seeing benefit. Why don't we add a few more users as part of this pilot program? Or why don't we add, I'm gonna turn on a few more features of our product so that your users can use it. And just start assuming that expansion. Because now what you're doing is kind of, think of it as infiltrating throughout the organization. Because the more people that get exposure to your product, the more difficult it's gonna be when they're successful to, for the executive to take it away from them. If, they're, if more people are using your product and they're successful and they like it and it's working, when the pilot program ends, the executive is going to be almost forced to continue using it because the team is having success. You're getting the outcomes that they need. So just assume the expansion. Be ready. Propose it. Just don't wait for the executive to say, hmm, sounds like based on the updates, things are going well. What do you think we should do next? Instead, take the leadership role and say, hey, uh, Mr. or Mrs. Executive, looks like the pilot program is going great. As you saw from my, my weekly update through the second week, we've got all 10 people up and running. So here's what we should do next. What we should do next is get the next 10 people up and running floor with somebody else on my team, get those 10 people trained and up and running by the end of the day on Tuesday. How does that sound? You just keep pushing forward. So assume the expansion, key part of pilot programs. And ultimately this is gonna shorten your sales cycle because now you're gonna have all of these users using as part of the pilot program, but eventually it's just gonna be part of their day-to-day -day process. So number eight, you wanna find local captains. Local captain is some It's enthusiastic. I guarantee there's gonna be one or two or three of those people when they log on and they start using it, they're gonna go, oh man, this is the best software I've ever used. Or you're not gonna believe this, man. Now because I'm using your software, I can make 10 more phone calls per day, or I can close seven more tickets per day, or I can get this transaction done in two minutes and it used to take me 20 minutes, and now it makes my job easier, it makes my life easier. You need to find those people, and turn them into captains. Because outside of those few that are on the front end of the distribution curve, you're gonna get a bunch of people on the back end that are just by the way they are, they're gonna say, oh, it's too hard, or I couldn't log in, or I don't know how to use it, or I don't see what the big deal is. Like you need that local, that local internal credibility. You need those power users, those local leaders to get those other folks motivated to use it and say, oh, no, 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 let me show you how I use it. Come over here, come over here, sit down. Let me show you how I use it. Look how I save uh, that 20 minute transaction or that 20 minute process. Dude, now with this new software, I'm done in two, let me show you. You need, to, you need to breed and make that enthusiasm viral throughout the organization. So finding local captains will help you do that. And you can do this with a couple different ways. Like one way to do it is, is, is it can be as simple as a t-shirt and a $25 gift card to anyone that gets through the first 100 processes. So let's say you're, you've are you got your new software, you're running the pilot, and you say, look, for the people that do 100 processes, for the first three people that knock out 100 accounts in this new software, you're gonna give you a t-shirt, and I'm gonna give you a $25 gift card to Starbucks. And what that, that competition is gonna help you see who's enthusiastic, who wants to use it, who's motivated to use your product. And it's really magical when you see that happen and you're on site and you watch these people come up to you and go, hey man, I just did my 100, where's my t-shirt? I'm going to Starbucks, where's my gift card? Like that's awesome, that's the enthusiasm that you want. And then even further, you can expand that out to the whole, the whole group. So let's say you've got, let's say, and you say, look, for the first three people that get to 100 accounts in our software, you're gonna get a t-shirt and a gift card. Now, when all 10 of you get to 100 accounts. If you get to 100 accounts each by Friday, I'm gonna bring in pizza and ice cream for everybody. So think about that. Now you've got group pressure and you've got these local camp captains that are gonna to wanna to help the people that are having a hard time. Because they're gonna be sitting there on Wednesday of the, of, the, of the pilot and go, wait, there's 10 of us in the pilot program, six of us got to 100 accounts, but hey, you four, you guys are lagging behind. You know, and you, you've only got 12 and we've only got two. 
and let's go help that person get to 100. So now you're gonna, you're gonna be basically creating this, this local community around and support around your product by establishing these local captains and giving that motivation to the team to use your product. So you wanna take leadership in this and you wanna be the one that's motivating them to use your product. Finding local, local captains can be a great way to do that. So the next thing you wanna do with number nine is get testimonials. So I wrote, you can see here, it says this is bleeping fantastic. So um, I, I wrote this because in a pilot program I was involved with recently, um, this is the email we got from a user. Like after we got this person up and running them how to use the software we we're implementing, this is the email that she sent. It was like, wow, think about that. And how can you use that testimonial? So obviously you can use it with your executive team that you're selling to and saying, hey, you know, we've had this pilot running for four weeks. I've run around to all 10 people that we're using as part of the uh, pilot program. And this is, these are all the things that they're saying that are great about our software. This is what they love about it. This is why they like it. This is why it's helping them do their job better. So obviously you're gonna use it in a sales situation. But think about where else can you use these testimonials? You can use them internally with your own team. I mean, think about the hours and the nights and the weekends that you and your team have put into building the, the weekends, the hard hours that your engineering and product and business people have been putting into building this product, right? So you're getting this email. Imagine getting this email from a user, day one of a pilot, that says, this is bleeping fantastic, and sending that to your engineering team and saying, team, all that hard work that you put in, this is what our users are saying about our product. Think about the morale boost that would give and the sense of accomplishment and pride that your team is gonna feel because you... So yes, you obviously wanna use testimonials from a sales standpoint, but think also how can I use that internally to really generate enthusiasm, to help people understand like, hey, this is why we're marching down this mission of the company to build this kind of product. So getting testimonials is key. And finally, the last tip for pilot programs is to use the calendar. So you wanna use your, your calendar. This is really helpful for shortening the sales cycle. You wanna use this as pressure or a reason for your prospective customer to take action. So right now I'm recording this, this um, webinar, it's middle of September. So one way I would use the calendar is say, look, Mr. Prospect, you know, software, we've done a couple of product demos, we've done some meetings, it looks like there's interest, here's what we should do. Well, let's get a pilot up and running for October and November, we'll run four to six weeks or six to eight week pilot program. Let's get this up and running now in Q4 so we can prove the value. So we can get, if, if and when we prove that value, we can expand to the whole company so that by January 1st, 2016, you are organization is going to start to see the full value of this new product in the new year. So that's one way you can use, uh, use the calendar. If, if it, it's not September, let's say it's January or February, it's early in the year, the calendar's flip and you have this prospect that's been kind of sitting there uh, for a couple months, you can't get them to move. And instead of me asking you to sign this big contract, here's what I want to do. Let's start with this pilot program now. We'll run this pilot program in March and April. When it goes well and we prove success, then we'll use May and June as a way to expand out to the rest of the organization, get them trained, get them up and running, so that July through the end of the year, so basically all of Q3 and all of Q4, you're gonna be able to see the value and get the benefits, reap the benefits of using our product. And the only way you're gonna start seeing those results and starting to, to get those cost savings or that increase in revenue or decreasing the risk in your organization by using our product is if we start a pilot program now. So what do you say we get started now? In it's February now, let's get up and running with a pilot by March 15th, get the pilot wrapped up by the end of April, and then we'll be able to show you the value and expand it out. So just think about ways, whether it's end of the year, beginning of the year, middle of the year, whatever, that you can use the calendar to your advantage in order to get these pilot programs up and running. So. Now what? That was 10 rapid fire ideas, thoughts around pilot programs. What do you do now? What's the action that you should take? Here's the first thing I want you to do. I want you to go to your, your sales pipeline and examine your top three prospects. So whether these are brand 
new leads, people that you just introduced to, or maybe these are people that you've been kind of working on for a few months and you can't quite get them over the goal line. I want you to examine those top three prospects. And then I want you to think about, based on the information you have and that you've accrued over time, what is the smallest possible pilot you could run with them? And think about how can you get that up and running? Then the next thing I want you to do is identify your executive, your executive sponsor. Who is the person that you, in fact, can get to push this pilot forward? Who can you get to scratch a check, however small it is, to pay for your pilot? Who's the executive sponsor that you know has leverage with legal and procurement and risk and infosec and IT in order to get you through that process? You need that person that's gonna be giving you access to those people and pushing you through those internal back office mechanisms in order to get this thing up and running. You've got to identify your top three prospects. Think about, so identify your top three. Think about what is a small executive sponsor at that prospect that can get your pilot up and running. And propose to them exactly what we just talked about. Give them a really small way to start with a pilot program. Talk about what the metrics are going to be and what the deliverables are going to be. Talk through the implementation plan, how you're going to be on site, how you're going to give them daily and weekly updates. Use everything that we've talked through here with these 10 ideas to give them a really clear picture on how this pilot program is going to work, how you're going to guarantee success of the pilot program, and how this is going to be the first step to a larger partnership. And that you're willing to take a step out there to be tested. You're willing to build trust through this pilot program before they go sign a big contract because you want them to be successful and you want to de-risk the decision for them when they start to think about you more broadly across the whole organization. So those are your action steps right now. So um, at the beginning of the, of the recording here, I talked about the Q framework. And so this is a, as I mentioned, it's a framework that we built here at Sales Qualia. And it's a Q framework because it uses questions to help you qualify and quantify your sales process. And the nice thing about this framework is that we've built out a really nice workbook. It's, uh, I must say, I'm really impressed by it. I think it's really good. And basically, by answering questions, you're going to be able to build your sales process with your company and with individual sales opportunities. And so I wanna make sure that you get a copy of this workbook. It's completely self-running. You know, you can download the workbook and work with it, work on it all on your own if you want to. If you want help, obviously let us know. We're happy to give you help. But if you want a copy, of the Q framework, all you need to do is shoot me an email, uh, Scott, S-C-O-T-T, -T, at sales, qualia, Q-U-A-L-I-A, dot com, so, Scott, at salesqualia.com, just say, hey, I want the workbook, and I will send that out to you. It's that simple. So that's, uh, that's the presentation for today, pilot program. So get out there, think about ways you can cross, you can bridge that gap between a protracted sales process and that big contract, and fill that gap with a really small pilot program that will get you in the door, get you through procurement, and prove the success that you know that your product can bring to your customers. So that's it. Thanks for listening, and thanks for watching, and look forward to the next time. Scott Sambucci signing off.